my name is Francesco Petruccione. Uh, I grew up in Italy, in, uh, in Genoa. Five years ago, I was offered uh, a professorship here yeah, at the University of Cosignata. And since there, then I'm here. Our job is twofold. First of all, you have to identify a problem. And then you have to switch on your brain yeah, and see how can I now contribute to solving the problem. And nobody tells you what, what you have to do. Hello, how, how are you? you? Okay, so you have first of all to look a little bit around and see what is it that could be a problem. And then you sit down and try to put together your, your theory or your experiment to try to explain how to solve this problem. Okay, there you see, the effect that we saw before has been exaggerated. Instead of seeing bands of bright lights, we see dots all around the lab. You'll see that it's like you know that every year, okay. every time you buy a new laptop, the processor is faster and uh, can do more fancy things. Yeah? And that is only because the chips inside become smaller, the connections are shorter and everything can go faster. Yeah? But now, in, in a few years' time, the, the, this process of miniaturization will be so small yeah, that uh, we will have to deal with single atoms within, <laughs> within your chip. Yeah? We will have kind of atom chips. Yeah? And the problem will be that once we will be able to have these quantum computers on a reasonable scale, security like we know it today will not be guaranteed anymore. Yeah? Because these quantum computers will be able to crack your credit card number. Yeah? And that is a problem. <laughs> At an atomistic level, yeah? There are other laws that govern nature. Yeah? We can't use the, the good old uh, Newton laws of the apple that falls on your head. Yeah? Today, if you go on the internet and buy a book at Kalahari or Amazon, yeah, at some stage you type in your credit card number. Yeah? And that means that in that moment, the information that you send, your credit card number, is encrypted. So that uh, a bad person, you know, an eavesdropper, can't simply see the number that you're typing. But this is essentially the basic principle on which we rely for security. I'm Adriana, I'm trying to finish my masters at the moment. But I really love teaching, so it's nice to do both. And my masters is kind of the theoretical aspects of the Quantum City project. So they're actually implementing it and I'm kind of working on um, secu a security proof for a different kind of protocol that could possibly be implemented in the future. Most cities now have optical fiber networks yeah, so that you can connect two buildings from the city or the bank and your headquarters yeah, and uh, that's all optical fiber. Yeah. And so we asked them whether we could uh, use part of their network to test this technology in, in real life situations, yeah, securing real, real life data. Yeah. And, uh, and the city <coughs> liked the idea very much, they even sponsored us very generously. And we are in the process to setting up a network that connects essentially four buildings and secures the transfer of communication between these municipal buildings through quantum key distribution. Yeah, so let's go and see Abdul. Yeah, Hello, Abdul. Hi, how are you? Yeah. But generally, people feel that optical fiber is very, very secure, uh, but it isn't. Uh, the, the piece of equipment like this um, which you can buy off the shelf is going to be used to tap into the optical fiber. All we're going to do is we're going to strip this wire which we've done already. Okay, you can see that we're, we're down to the bare fiber here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to bend this fiber slightly. And when this fiber bends, it's going to leak out some of the light. And now, as soon as I put this down, you should see that the lights come on. You can notice that uh, we've basically got a video on uh, a, a video which is being streamed across the internet uh, be between two computers and what we've done is we've intercepted that uh, information just by tapping into the optical fiber. Um, even if it is uh, encrypted, uh, people can still uh, 
uh, get that encrypted information and try to decrypt it as well. My name is Poppy Simonyu. I'm a master's student here in the School of Physics at Westwood Campus. After my honors, I got this opportunity to study here with um, the Quantum Research Group. And our task was to develop a single photon source that we um, gonna use to encode data for, for quantum key distribution. The, the diamond it excites that can be set, and as it decays to the ground state, it gives off photons that we collect and send to to detection. And those... One of the problems that we have at university is to attract people to to science. Huh? There are, of course, stereotypes that, uh, that, in particular against physics, that it is a difficult subject. Yeah? In, the, in particular, in the first years of the studies of physics, are the toughest one because you have to learn the mathematics, you have to learn the physics, you have to learn the theory, you have to learn to use computers. Uh, the, the, the good point is, however, that once you've been through this training, yeah, you're very good. <laughs> I take you now to visit Charles Freeman, who is one of our PhD students. And this is the current project I'm working on, which is a, a single photon detector. One of the things that we are developing is a quantum key distribution system. Yeah? And this, uh, this system has two main components. Yeah? One is a source for single photons, and at the other end you need a detector for single photons. Those are the two most expensive and delicate components in the, in the system. Yeah? And, and Charles, uh, during his master thesis, he designed a single photon source, and now during his PhD thesis, he's designing and building a single photon detector. Will you tell us what you are trying to do here? Uh, well, this is going to be a laser cooling experiment, and, and, and so we are using lasers to cool a uh, small cloud of atoms to accept them at low temperatures. And, and, uh, Cold atoms are slow atoms, and, 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 and then we can control them in, in, in a much better way. And hopefully, this will lead us to uh, a way to build a quantum computer in the end. Maybe somebody has it already, yeah, and they would be stupid to tell us, yeah, because they probably can misuse it. Yeah? So, in principle, you can fight the problem of quantum computers making our security, uh, putting our security in danger by using quantum cryptography, yeah? which even a quantum computer <laughs> can't crack. Yeah? So when the diamond was created, there was nitrogen present in There are laws that describe quantum phenomena, that describe how the electron works, how the proton works, how atoms work. And those laws are quite funny. Yeah? The notion or the concept of entanglement. They are a little bit different than our classical physics uh, laws. This is one example of a quantum cryptography protocol that entanglement does lie at the basis of the security. And these computers that operate in this quantum world yeah, will be able to solve certain classes of problems much, much better than, than your laptop yeah? or your mainframe computer or your parallel computer. And one of the problems that they will be good at is solving the problem of encryption. Why I decided that we had to work towards uh, spinning off a company out of our reserve, and that is something that we hope to do very soon, yeah? is that uh, to have a model in which students see that they come to the university, they study, get involved in projects, and then have a chance either to be employed by maybe a company that we set up, or maybe leave the university with their own ideas and set up their own company. Yeah? If people come and study physics through the training that they get, that opens them possibility even outside physics and very interesting possibilities that are also rewarded very well. Yeah.